Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Yes, today is the day that we actually got to sit there and see Blair from One Light to Learn. And I gotta sit there and say, she still got it. Look, the voice. <laughs> She still got it. Um, now, her plan, you know, the reason why she's, you know, doing this whole suing for deception and everything like that, like, her plan is to sit there and try to, you know, get Martin from practically bleeding her dry money-wise. But it's such a convoluted and stupid plan. So, from what Tracy Smith is saying is that you know, she plans on, well, Tracy plans on practically having Lucy go broke and somehow Martin is going to marry her and that will stop, you know, because the, the whole deal is if Martin can't sit there and get remarried, you know, I sit there and keep getting those checks coming in. So if Martin marries Lucy, then, you know, she could sit there and, you know, not have to sit there and be paying him money like every month or whatever, like an absurd amount of money. Not just money, but like an absurd amount of money. But I'm like, this is all hinging on the fact that Martin will marry her because she's broke. I'm like, he could just give her some money. Like I, I don't I don't really understand. Like none of that makes sense. Like he can still sit there and support her, regardless if she, you know, if, if they're married or not. So I don't I don't really get that. I'm pretty, there has to be more to it. There has to be more to it. Now, apparently, the deceptor was Blair's idea. And when she was with Martin and stuff like that, this is how Martin, you know, got the idea from Blair and passed it off to Lucy. So, I mean, technically, Lucy did kind of. Technically, Lucy did kind of steal it, but she didn't realize that she was stealing. All she realized was that Martin was simply like, hey, maybe sit there and try this, and maybe you can sit there and do that. Um, so it wasn't like it was intentional that she stole the idea. Now, this scene with Carly and Ava was kind of pointless. It, I mean, it was, it was somewhat pointless. Because Carly wanted to know, you know, what was up with Ava and, um, you know, why Sunday Smith did going through all this for you. And, you know, like, he wants to sit there and protect his daughter, but it's like, what's, what's going on? You got, you know, you mixed up with Austin and stuff like that. And she told Austin, I mean, she told, um, her about Austin's visit to, um, Austin's visit to, to Benville. And she didn't know that. And so Carly was like, yo, listen. You know, I'm going to sit there and say it's for Avery's sake. Just don't trust him. But other than that, she wanted information and Avery wouldn't give it. So that's why I sit there and say it was somewhat pointless. Now, Nicholas is ready to sit there and go to Europe. He wants to go to Europe because he wants to sit there and try to stop um, Spencer from inheriting all his money. But, of course, he can't stay in Port Charles because of, you know, the stuff that he went up doing to Esben. So he can't be in Port Charles, but he has to sit there and let the world know that he's alive. So this way, you know, eventually when he gets back, you know, his son isn't, you know, pretty much having all the stuff that... I, I, I can't even sit there and say he really earned because it, it was inherited to him. But he wants to sit there and make sure that he's going to have all his ish um, when everything is, you know, set and done. Because Spencer went to Alexis today, you know, they, he got some some papers or whatever some, to saying that he inherits everything that Nicholas inherited. So why do you know why does Nick in the office or whatever? Um, Spencer's not there telling Alexis about like, hey, you know, I, I need a favor for you. I need to sit there and make sure you watch Esme and Ace because I'm going to be you know Trina when you know New York full of you know full of the bed. And of course, Esme is just not there, just outside the door, just listening in. And she draws the papers or whatever. She comes in there. And, um, 
you know, she leaves. It doesn't really go anywhere. But I have a feeling that Esme is going to try to do something to disrupt Spencer and Trina's um, trip. You know, Alexis is like the closest thing that Spencer has to a mom, I feel like. Because they always actually had a good relationship. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. Anna had enough. They're out at dinner with Valentine, and Anna gets a note from one of the, you know, well, from one of the staffs, and pretty much it's a list of, you know, basically Smith is saying that Valentine wasn't where he was supposed to be, at, and she confronts him. He's like, "Yeah, well, you know, I wasn't really there," and you know, it's just one of those things. He's like, "Well, why are you lying to me?" You know, she's like, "Why are you lying to me for?" and you know, Valentine's thing is that he wants to sit there and try to protect her. He wants to sit there and try to keep his relationship from Pikeman separate from her. But I'm like, whatever this whatever this is, if Pikeman is really coming after her, or they're, you know, the WSB is using Pikeman to go after her, they kind of put her, well, well technically, they didn't put her in, in danger, but it's like, if she caught you at this point, and I'm I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, why are you why are you being with a man that you can't trust? You snip there having dinner with him the whole time. You can't trust him. He snipped there being vague about his answers. And she's just like, all right, well, you know, how about we just, you know, go back to the room and whatever? I'm like, what do you mean just go back to the room? Like, well, yeah, just you just gonna just go to bed next to him and just what, figure the ish out in the morning? Like, you confronted him for a reason because you can't trust him, and it's frustrating. Um, and, you know, you sit there and say to him, you know, if, if I didn't sit there and find this out from Dante or whatever, what are you going to sit there and tell me? And he gives some sort of circle by answer, but the answer is no. So why the hell are you actually sitting there going back to a hotel with him for? Now, of course, they want to go back to the hotel. She's sitting there saying she's feeling a little kind of queasy or whatever, and, you get into the room, it's trash. Um, there's a lot of red ink everywhere. And then there's like this ominous note in the bathroom just saying, you know, we're going to get you or, you know, you think that you're safe and you're not or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Trina came into that room, saw pretty much nothing was, like, nearly nothing was packed out. And Josh was like, yeah, well, you know, dust came over and one thing led to the next. And, like, yep, so nothing got done, when I, you know, the, by the time I got here. Awesome. Um, they talk about um, Trina going to New York with Spencer, being their first time and everything. And it was... It was a mixed feeling with this, you know, with this particular scene. Because it's like, you know, they seem like they're the usual catch-up or whatever and confiding each other. But it also kind of felt like a little bit of a PSA. You know, Jocelyn being like, oh, so, did you, you know, is he pressuring you and stuff like that? And then she's like, yeah, you know, I give him brief, whatever, but he's a good person. Like, well, if that's the case, you would know that he's not the type of person who would sit there and pressure her. So why, like, why did you ask that for? Like, again, I feel like that was more of a PSA than anything else. Um, but yeah, I have a feeling that, that Esme's going to sit there and do something to make sure um, the other don't have their first time or she's going to try to do something to ruin it out of the way. Because reasons. <laughs> because reasons at this point. Now, while Blair is not there talking to Tracy, um, you know, they're sitting down and stuff like that, Lucy and Martin, you know, they're about to sit there in the dining room. Martin looked like he was about to have a heart attack. I was like, bro, what is going on? They're sitting down the whole time. He's all like, oh, so, so you want to go to, uh, you know, Kelly's or something like that? You want, you want to go somewhere else? I'm like, bro, this woman, I was like, yo, this woman got you that shook? <laughs> it's like, yo, she she got this dude on pens and needles the entire time 
they are talking, they're talking about the scepter and everything like that. He had pretty much has his menu like this. I'm like, Lucy, you don't find that strange? Well, of course not, because you're, you know, Lucy has a way of, like, she just starts talking, just da -da 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 and not really paying attention. I'm just like, if this was anybody else, they would have been just kind of sitting there and be like, bro, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? You, you good? Um, they're talking, and, uh, you know, again, the whole time, he's all like, oh, so, so, we're we, we going to leave, going to go somewhere else? Yo, all right, we're going we gonna to need some shots over here, whatever. And eventually, Lucy's like, right, you know what, listen, I lost my appetite, I want to go somewhere else. So, she goes to use the ladies' room, and Blair sees Martin, so while he's not there drinking or whatever, she comes up behind him. She gently touches this guy, and it looked like he was about to jump out of his skin. I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, bro, what did she do to you? You know, she, and, you know, the way she was meant to talk, like, oh, you know, I missed you, whatever, or something like that, that she said, and kissed him on the cheek. And I'm just like, what kind of relationship was that? Now, granted, I'm assuming this is, you know, the... um. I forgot. I forgot how he put how he put her contact in his in his phone or whatever. But like, you know, this was like the the mean one, the the, the really scary one or whatever. And I can see why. I mean, I can sit there and see why. I mean, this dude's literally jumping out of his skin. Although I'm not gonna lie, I, when I here's the thing: when I used to sit there and we'll like watch on um, one like love. I mean, she was definitely that woman that was like you didn't play games with her, but like. I mean, I don't remember her being like a tyrant or anything like that. I don't, I don't remember her being a tyrant. Um, in a lot of ways, I felt like she reminded me of Carly, um, which I thought was really interesting in the first time that Blair was on the show, and you know, her and Carly was really vibing and stuff like that. Um, so I feel like she's she's more or less kind of like Carly. That's why I was like, what did like. Like, did she turn into a different character um, during One Like to Live wasn't on wasn't on the air? I'm I'm very curious about that because I'm just like, why is he so jumpy for? Her? I mean, he looked at her and he, but most of that time he was with Lucy. His head was like he was practically hiding in that damn menu. I feel like that's about it. I can't really think of anything else that wound up happening. So. With that being said, I'm going to go. Now, if I did miss anything, you know what to do. Come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and talk about all the shows, why in our days, B&B, &B, and, of course, GH. With that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.